John Charles was perhaps the finest footballer Wales has ever produced. He was indisputably the greatest player in two positions I ever saw, centre forward and centre half. Born in Swansea, he became a hero in Leeds. His greatness came through word of mouth and you must go and watch this man John Charles and people came to see him uh, in person. His time at Juventus made him an international legend. I don't think we realise in Wales how good of a player and, and uh, how much of a, a god he really was in Italy. But it was John's qualities as a man that earned him the title The Gentle Giant. John Charles was born in 1931 in Kumdi, a solidly working-class area of Swansea. The Charleses lived in a small terraced house they shared with another family. John's father, Ned, was a steelworker whose own promising football career for Swansea Town Reserves was ended when he broke his leg. Both John and his brother, Mel, would grow up to play football for Wales. John was sports mad from the start. As boys, he and Mel spent every spare minute in nearby Kumburla Park. You know, we just saying about about this park. You know, it used to be full all day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. You know, yes. and then at four o'clock when they finish, if it was school time, yeah. when they finish school, yeah. and they straight up here, and, and yeah. there's be two against two, and then four it's a four, four, and, and then twenty-two seven, against twenty-two. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. Got it. First game I remember you playing for Gendras. And I was going down to see the Swans, and I'll always remember it. He said, do you fancy a game today? I said, I'm going down to see the Swans. <laughs> he said, I'll leave you play out. And I scored seven goals. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe my, that, Johnny. My, believe my that. Last yeah, yeah. Football, I, was I can't goal. remember that. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you, boy. Yeah, right. take care. Take care. Take care. I can't remember him scoring seven goals at <laughs> Charlo. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> At the age of 12, John played for Swansea schoolboys, who in those days could attract a crowd of 20,000. One thing I remember particularly is an occasion when John Charles hadn't done whatever he was supposed to do in class, and Charles was called out for the cane. And I can see the schoolmaster now. Wake up, Charles, wake up. You'll never make a living playing football. At the age of 14, John caught the eye of a scout for Swansea Town. After a trial at the Vetchfield, he left school to take up a job as one of the ground staff there. Cleaning boots and weeding the pitch was all part of a young footballer's apprenticeship in those days. But after two years at the Vetch, John was frustrated by the fact he was rarely given a chance to play. Though Swansea Town failed to see his potential, it wasn't lost on one local man. A fellow by the name of uh, Jack Pickard, Jack was a, a grass, what you call him, though. He, was, he used to sneak around and get players and send them off to Leeds, though. Jack Pickard was a scout who worked for Major Frank Buckley, manager of Leeds United. Jack was in Kumburla Park one day to watch a local Swansea League fixture when he happened to catch sight of John having a kickabout. I don't know what he saw me because I, I didn't think I could play, no, at that time. I didn't think I could play at all. But Jack Picard's notebooks tell another story. I noted a group of youngsters having a happy-go-lucky kickabout with a soccer ball behind the goalposts. I was so enthralled by the potential of the biggest of the boys that I was loath to leave the spot when my wife gently tugged my arm, informing me that the match I'd really come to watch was already in progress. So I mentioned that, in my opinion, he could be coached and trained into a top-grade soccer player, and I'd like to know more about him. Jack Pickard later said he felt as excited as a fight manager who knows he's found a world heavyweight champion. So he said, well, I'll see about sending to Leeds. My mother at the time said, uh, he can't go. He says, uh, I'm very sorry, Mr Pickard. So he says, why? He says, he hasn't got his passport yet. <laughs> 
You know, you can imagine that they've never been out to Wales. You know, she'd never been out to Wales. Never been out to Swansea, really. At the age of 16, John made his first ever trip outside Wales on the seven-hour train journey to Leeds. After two weeks of trials, Leeds signed him. This caused uproar back home when Swansea Town realized what they'd lost. At Leeds, John was on three pounds, 10 shillings a week. In his modest digs, he and the other apprentices slept three to a bed. I made my debut against uh, Queen of the South family to come up and see you for your debut, or was it...? Uh... No, they didn't come up, no. They couldn't afford it. And I couldn't afford it was to bring them up, so they didn't come up. John was put in at centre-half, replacing Tom Holly, who was injured and watching from the stands. Holly later said, within 20 minutes, I knew that my football days weren't simply numbered, they were finished. John would remain in the Leeds first team for the next eight years. Leeds was run like a military unit by the eccentric Boer War veteran Frank Buckley, who wore plus fours and insisted that even his family address him as Major. Major Buckley says, you're playing centre-half today, so I... So he, he was sitting on the line and he said, go up for the corner, John, and a fellow by the name of Chick Farr was in goal then. And um, I went up for the ball and I said, bang, I got a smack right in the, the jaw, no? Went down the floor and Mr Farr which I called him then. He said, don't come in the penalty area anymore, will you, John? I said, no, Mr. Farr, I won't come in anymore. <laughs> John was not an aggressive man, but he was a formidable footballer. Major Buckley said of him, John Charles is the greatest I've ever had. I've never seen anyone like him in 50 years in the game. What made John special was his versatility. In 1952, Buckley moved him from defence to the attacking position of centre-forward. That season, John scored 26 goals in 28 league games. Well, there's only one thing to do in football, score goals. And when I was playing centre-forward and I scored goals, that was the best position. No matter what anybody else says, that was the best. When he didn't score goals, it was better to play centre-half. <laughs> For the final game of the season, Buckley paired John with a promising new 17-year-old at centre-half. When they saw the first team for the game at Doncaster, I remember John looking at it and going, who's that? <laughs> he pointed to me. I mean, I didn't even know I was playing. Nobody had told me. Jack was just coming through then, at, uh, at the beginning. And uh, as a matter of fact, I went to centre forward and, and he came to back into, into centre half. I remember down the road once and I'd got settled into the team a little bit then and uh, we had a corner against us. <laughs> and John came back and, and I said to him, we don't need you back here, you're better up front. You know, we've handled everything up to now, we, we were okay. And he went, don't you talk to me like that, I'll go where I want to go. And, and then after the match, he come and got me against the wall in, in the dressing room and he, in the right got me. You don't ever tell me what I'm supposed to be doing on the pitch, you know. Jack and John were soon working smoothly together as a team. During the 1953 to 54 season, John set a new club record, scoring 42 league goals, a record that remains unbeaten to this day. He was now Leeds' star player. I mean, his physique and his fitness, and his ball control and his heading power, with the, with the old-fashioned football which they played with in them days, was tremendous. I think everybody admired him. And so when, when they obviously played away from home, I think he was one of these players that put sort of three to 4,000 extra spectators on the gate just to come to watch one man play football. Tremendous play. If we'd had television, <laughs> the great exposure of television in those days, John would have been um, a, a much more famous character. Everybody has seen Shearer, everybody has seen um, uh, Zola, everybody has seen Rude Ru Hullet on television, but um, they didn't see John Charles on television. But his reputation 
his greatness uh, came through word of mouth and you must go and watch this man John Charles and people came to see him uh, in person. It was so that much important to Leeds United that the club was so unfairly get, get called Charles United because he, he scored so many of the goals and he did so much of the defending that there, there were some good players in the side but uh, the, uh, I think any side would have paled you know, in comparison to John. John didn't let this adulation go to his head. I remember being in a, in a, in a club in, in Stoke many years ago, a nightclub. I was there to judge a beauty contest, right? Miss Potteries or something like that. And I was standing at the bar <laughs> thinking, what am I doing here? And I was tapped on my shoulder and I turned around and looked at him there, was this big man, he said, you don't know me. He said, my name's John Charles. I said, I, I don't know you. I said, you're my hero. Come and sit down. But it seemed to me that that was, he wasn't being affected. He, he thought I genuinely didn't know him, that, that he would have to introduce himself. And I think that that is, that's a, just an indication of the real genuine modesty of the man. Even as Leeds' top goal scorer, John was on the standard wage of only £15 a week with the odd bonus. I remember when I scored Matrick, I think it was against Doncaster. And um, I go around the ground and uh, on the Tuesday, and I'm walking into the ground, the chairman's coming out and he says, well done, Jack. He used to call me Jack. So he says, well done, Jack. He says, uh, you go to my garage and get three gallons of petrol. And I looked at him and I says, Mr. Bolton, I haven't got a car. <laughs> In parallel with his success at Leeds, John was enjoying a career as an international player alongside his brother, Mel. However, John's Welsh debut against Northern Ireland in 1950 didn't go well. I had some shocking write-up after that match. And the, the worst one, I think, was um, a gentleman called Desmond Ackett, who, who didn't like me anyway, I don't think. And uh, he gave me some stick in the paper. And I wasn't picked for two, two years after. And I was only picked because Ray Daniels had gone with Arsenal to Brazil on a tour, and they were short of a centre-half, so they picked me. And from then on, I didn't come out of the team. To judge from the size of the crowd, it seemed as if all Welsh Wales had come to support their team at Wembley, the 65th battle against the White Shirts of England. In those days, fixtures between the British home nations were a highlight of the footballing calendar. The atmosphere used to be terrific, really. You know, you go to Hamden Park and, you know, there'd be 100,000 there. Or you go to an Indian Park and there'd be, what, 50, 60,000 at Indian Park. This would be terrific. Terrific. It used to build you up, you know. When, uh, when they used to play the national anthem, you used to get emotional and what have you, you know, and it was absolutely terrific. Wales had John Charles in their half-back line with his brother Mel, also a very alert mascot. Top spectators were soon watching Welsh right-winger Cliff Jones racing away. Wales, in fact, made a pretty good start in this international at Ninian Park. Half an hour had barely passed when Graham Williams breed spring it. In spite of this opener, England looked the better side, but they had those two Charleses to contend with and Kelsey in goal. Now John Charles cleared a certainty. The match petered out as a draw, but spectators had their heroes to acclaim. Notably, of course, John Charles, who was mobbed. 